Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Z Garcia, hello. Sam Healy, welcome back folks. Today we're taking a look at Civilization and New Dawn. Now, this is the third Sid Meier Civilization game that's been made. The first was made by Eagle Games way back in the day, which was an overwrought don't, game for sure. I remember that one. Yeah, you would have hated it for yeah, sure. Maybe. It had a lot of cool plastic miniatures, yeah. um, but there was a lot, of, a lot of problems with it. Then <coughs> Fantasy Flight remade the game mm -hmm. about six years ago or so. Has it been that long? It's, wow, well, okay. it was right when I came to America. It's one of the ones I, I never reviewed because it was during my transition, but I did play it. Yeah. And it was based on Civilization Four at the time, I believe. Or I'm not sure. Maybe it was based on Five, but whatever. That one was a shorter game. It was about. I don't know if you ever played that one. No. Now. I don't think so. There was like multiple ways to win. You go in by culture, or by economics, or by conquest, and there's a lot of things going on. It's very much a Civilization game. They announced this one and said that it was not a sequel or a remaking of that one, but it was a whole new game, mm -hmm. a more streamlined version, but still with the uh, Civilization theming on it. Yes. Uh, the box says two to four players, which is definitely true. What's the, what does the time on the box say? One to two hours. I think that's a very legitimate time. Mm -hmm. Here's how it plays. on a board here that's going to be made up of several different pieces and you can you can follow the setup that the book shows you or then you can also play where everyone sets up their own board you, know, you kind of work together to make a board yeah there's going to be certain pieces on the board that are going to show you where capital cities are going to go and everyone starts with a capital city on the board more importantly everyone is going to start with a civilization so example some of the civilizations that are shown in the game. So let's say, for example, I start with France. So I have Catherine de' Medici here, and I'm playing the red player. Catherine de' Medici is going to show me how I have my cards initially set up. And the way these cards are set up, the way these cards work, this is the entire uh, point of the game. Uh, so you have five cards that you start with, and they're all level one. And on a player's turn, they're going to pick one of these cards to use. So let's say I, I use pottery. I'll take pottery, I'll use it, and then I'll move it down, moving the other cards up. The higher a card is, the better it works. Sometimes the card will work with the number above it, and sometimes it will work with the terrain. So uh, real briefly, like for example, uh, here, move each of your caravans up to three spaces. They can move into spaces matching this slot's terrain or lower. So I can move a caravan on the board in these three types of terrain. So if you have it all up into five, you can move into mountains. Otherwise, you can't. If you have it in four, you can move in deserts. Otherwise, you can only do so if you're in a five. So that's like the meat of the game. What do the different cards do? One of the important cards here is astrology. When you do this one, you'll advance your tech dial a number of spaces equal to this slot's number. Each player has a tech dial, so here I might advance it two. Once you get to three, I'm going to pick a two technology. Once I get to six, a two, then I get some threes and fours. And each player has the exact same deck of different technologies, so I might say, I'm going to take currency, and this is going to replace uh, foreign trade. I know that because they have the same symbol on them. They're both economy cards. And even later on, when you get threes and fours, you don't have to upgrade a two. I could take a one all the way up to a four. I could take early empire and change it to mass media. The cards all essentially do the same thing. So, for example, I just mentioned uh, astrology. Astrology says place a trade token from the supply on one of your focus cards. So I'd put this maybe here. And then advance your tech dial number of spaces equal to this slot's number. So it's the same thing as astrology, but better. And that's how all of these work. So the best way is to show you what they each do. Astrology, as I explained, lets you advance your tech dial more. But the other ones are all going to have things that work with the board. One of the things that you can do, and this is from 
uh, early empire is you can put control tokens on spaces that match this uh, the terrain or less. So your control tokens are going to go next to a friendly thing. This shows that you basically control that area. So you are going to be controlling things, and when you control a spot that has one of these resources on the map, you will get it. You can't control spots where there's barbarians or where other players' figures are, but you're trying to slowly increase your culture as you move these slots out. You are also trying to make your cities mature. A city is mature when it is completely surrounded by control tokens, or if it's next to the board, let's say I have a city here, this city is mature because it's next to the board, it's next to water, and it's next to control tokens. And so that's the whole reason about putting out control tokens. Now, as the game goes by, after each player's turn, um, one person's going to be moving this dial every turn, and it's going to have barbarians move, add new barbarians, or give a supply cube to anyone who has, for each mature city that each person has. When barbarians move, you are going to roll a die and look at this tile, which is placed next to the board at the beginning of the game, this one here, and it's going to show you what directions all barbarians move into. If barbarians move into a control token, it's gone. If they move into one of your cities, that city is gone. And so you have to be careful. And so another card you have is going to let you reinforce control tokens. It puts them up like this. And so if a barbarian bumps into one of those, it just flips over and the barbarian is repulsed. So you can reinforce those. You can also do attacks. When you do an attack in this game, you're going to use the number where the card was at and add that to a die roll. The person you're attacking, even if it's the barbarians, is also going to be rolling a die and adding the defense number of the terrain. Again, note it by the card, each number has a terrain. And you also might have other bonuses. So you can get rid of barbarians, removing them from the board. You can attack other players. You can attack their control tokens and replace them with your own control tokens and things like that. Uh, so there is attack in the game, but it's kind of abstracted down to a single die roll. You can also do foreign trade where you can put your caravans on the board and you can move them. You can trade with these minor city states, like for example, here's Seoul. I can go to Seoul and trade with them, which will give me some of these trade tokens, but also can give me a card that matches Seoul, which will give me a special ability. Here, the soul card at the beginning of my turn, I can move a barbarian one adjacent empty space. So that gives me more control with the barbarians. Players can also use one of their cards. This is the pottery card to build new cities on the board. And they have to be two, at least one space away from other cities that are already there. Or you can build a wonder of the world. There are four different types of wonders of the world. Each of them has a cost. So for example, the pyramids here is a cost of nine. To do that, I'm going to look at the pottery card or whatever the uh, industry card is I'm using to build it. I'm going to use the number that it's at as a base number, so, so that's four, but I need five more. I can do that with trade tokens or the resources shown on here. So here it shows mercury and oil. For each mercury or oil resource I spend, I reduce the cost by two. Once you build a one of the world, you'll put it in front of you, you will also find the matching wonder of the world tile type. Each tile comes with a different matching wonder of the world. So for example, here's the Petra one. If I would build the Petra one, I would put this underneath one of my cities on the board to show that city has a wonder of the world. Each city can only have one wonder. Now wonders are going to give you special abilities. Each wonder does something different, and when you have them, you'll have that special ability, and you can actually even capture a wonder another player has. The whole point of the game, though, is about these three cards that are placed here. These are the victory conditions for how a player would win the game. And these cards are going to change from game to game. So while these three cards are out here now, it's quite possible that these two cards could also be here. So you're going to use three of these cards. And each card has two different things that can happen on it. Once you accomplish that, you'll put a token on it. The first person to get a token on all three cards wins. They're very simple, like here, first person to get their technology dial all the way up to the top, or build two blue wonders of the world, build two yellow wonders, build two red wonders, conquer two of the city-states, and have or have eight cities on the board, have 15 uh, tokens, control uh, culture tokens next to water or the edge of the board, have two purple um, wonders of the world, have five mature cities, or have two natural wonders. There's natural wonders on the board that you can get. When you get this, it's like basically having that resource permanently. You can use it once per turn. So it's like having a free resource every turn. I should also mention you've seen a lot of the different 
of these supply tokens. These can be put on the cards and they basically are going to allow you to make that card better. Each one will tell you at the bottom. Like this lets your trading, your, your caravans move farther. This one lets you move up more in a tech dial. This one adds one to your combat value when they're placed on here. So using these tokens to good use will help you out. There's a couple other things you can trade with other players when you get to a, a player's city. You'll be able to go through a small deck of cards that they have and take one of these, which will give you a benefit as long as you continue to trade with that player. You can attack other players, but either way, you're going to keep going till somebody manages to get a token on the three cards that are placed out there. That person is the winner. All right, so a Civ game comes with lots of pieces and things. But there's one noticeable lack of pieces in this game, and that's any kind of military pieces. Armies. Yes. Now, you yeah. like armies the best. <clears throat> what is your thoughts on that? that I was, uh, that's probably my one major disappointment with the game, uh, is the fact that it didn't come with a military aspect that isn't abstracted away into practically oblivion. <laughs> like you're fighting with culture, and even the barbarian pieces are not like little barbarians. They're like just No, they're tokens. tokens. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the combat resolution is weak at best. I didn't enjoy that at, at all. Um, but the... And then on top of that, the essence of, I, I don't know, maybe I have a too much of a militaristic view of having to build your own civilization, but you've got to protect yourselves from other people. That seems to me like a huge part of building your civilization from the ground up, and it was basically non-existent here, um, other than a few words on a card. Or fortify your, yeah. your culture. It's right. Kinda right, right, right. I don't know. I guess for me, the, the ultimately the thing is for me, if 4X games and Civ games are not really something that I'm uh, attracted to. So I'll enjoy that kind of game, but I enjoy it if it is a streamlined, good, interesting hour, hour and a half, maybe even two hour game that has a 4X or Civ theme on that, mm. if, if that makes any sense. Because I don't want the issues that, that Civ games have sort of dragged through history with them, you know. And while I can see people having issues with that in this game, where they might, you know, play it or, or look at it and go, doesn't really feel like a Civ game. I, I don't have a problem with that. Because I ultimately, I don't want those problems that those games bring. Yes, they're realistic. You are getting a lot of baggage with those, with those things, you know. Well, that's good. I mean, it gives us this kind of intro. That's where we're all coming from into the game. You, I mean, I, I want a more deeper civilization experience, yeah. and you want the more streamlined game. At the heart of the game, it's based on those cards. Yes. That whole moving the cards around and upgrading the cards. What would you all think of that? It's a great system. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's... Um, that is a bright, shining spot in this, in this game. Yeah. Uh, that mechanism of uh, firing off whatever part of your civilization you want to fire off to gain that effect whenever you want, but just realize that the lower down the totem pole that it is, the lesser of an effect it's going to have. Right. The higher up, the bigger effect it's going to have, but you have to wait longer to be able to do it. Um, that's a really cool, tension-filled uh, mechanism that is really a, a great core mechanism for the game. I really enjoyed that aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. I yeah, know you liked it. I like it so much that I almost wish the, there was another game. I should say almost. I do wish there was a game just based on that. Right? Like, get rid of the board and all that. Save the card game. You, you mean you expect Fantasy Flight to use a mechanism from one of their games in another game? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I, I, I like that. I wouldn't mind seeing that whole thing. It's, it almost feels like it's this, it's this cool idea. It's the, the longer you wait to use a card, the better it gets. Yeah, but yeah. you want to use them earlier sometimes because of the situation. Yeah. Right. Because the way you're timing your, your strategy. <clears throat> and you can upgrade them. I would not have been totally upset had the card sets been different per sieve. I thought the differences between civilizations was not that great. But, to be fair... In actual civilization, the computer game, it isn't really that different either. They each have like one unique unit and one right. power and all. Um, so I really like that aspect. I like moving those around and I get what the game does. I think the game works. The game finishes in an hour and two hours. 
I waffle on this one. I'm just kind of mad on it for a couple mm. reasons. One, I think they abstracted out a lot of the theme. The, the game is not, it's not themeless, but yet I don't feel, I feel like if you had called this, if you hadn't called this civilization and played it with someone, they would not know. Okay. Call it something else, they would say, oh, this is a new Civ type game. They wouldn't say, oh, this is Civilization. Sid Meier Civ. True. They would not have known. Okay. Um, I also feel like there wasn't a lot of, there's not a lot of tension in the game. Yes, there's attacking other people, which, by the way, Sam understates, I hate the whole attacking thing. I hate roll two dice and add a couple modifiers across the board. That feels really old. That feels like a super old combat system. Hmm. Not something, in, and it's just not that interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And the barbarians, I don't find them interesting. They're more annoying than anything else. I just like the card thing. If the card thing wasn't there, I would dislike the game. As it is, that's the part of the game I like the best. Okay. And just this whole spreading culture, I know that's part of Civ, and I'm easily the biggest Civ player of the three of us. Yes. I really like the new Civilization a lot. Um, I like growing my civilization and growing things, but I didn't feel that here. I didn't feel like I was growing a civ. When I got to wander the world, that's kind of cool. When I met these um, city states that you work with, that's cool, but they really, really abstracted it out, and I think they almost sacrificed a little bit of fun for the sake of speed. Mm. Yeah, hmm. I, I can definitely see that uh, where, and I, I guess that's a problem that a lot of companies will have when they try to take a game and streamline it. Uh, they run the the danger of, of cutting out that part of the game that makes it fun for a lot of people. Right. Um, you, you might appease one group by making a shorter, more palatable game, but then you you kind of en enrage another group of people that you've taken away the the one thing in the game that I enjoyed doing, or a large part of the game. It's just again, it's that concept of I want to tell an epic. Uh, Lord of the Rings esque uh, story that is that involved. I also want to do it in thirty minutes. Well, you're gonna have to gloss over a lot of stuff, you know. Yes, but I want every character and I want every moment. You again, you're gonna have to <laughs> resort to basically pictures right. if you want to show every character. That's what that is. And this right? shows that I'm it's a hypocrite. Either Civ, and you want all those beats. It's gonna take a while, or you know, then you're not going to tell a whole civilization. Maybe, how about you You portray 10 years of evolution right. instead of, you know, uh, his, history. Yeah. Like I said, it makes me a hypocrite because, in a sense, I, I'm right. Because I'm the guy and the guy who's like, oh, I love these civilization games, but they're too long. Please shorten them. Please shorten them. Please shorten them. They did. And I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe I didn't want that. <laughs> right. And that's, okay, I'm not Be there. Be careful what you ask for. Right. And maybe this kind of game shouldn't be shortened. However... What did you think of it? I think you liked it more than that, then. Because I you don't care about the civilization right, thing. That's it. That's exactly it. I go into it going, yeah, all right. I don't think I've ever played a Civ game, like a video video game, computer game. Mm -hmm. So I'm bringing nothing to the table. I did not play the last Civ game. It was, it looked... That includes strategy, but... It looked epic, so I was like, I don't think this is for me. You know, it looked a little too big for me. This one, you said it was about an hour and a half. I'm like, all right, let's try it. And yeah, I enjoy it, but I'm not bringing any expectations. That's partly it. I enjoyed it. I, I, I'm not going to say I loved it, okay? I enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. I thought many of the actions, though, are a little bit uh, ho-hum. The game has this progression to it, the, the, the leveling up or the expansion that doesn't necessarily feel exciting. It just feels like progress. You know, like you show up at work in the morning and when you're done, eight hours later, you've worked. You've done something. Does that, is that exciting? Not necessarily. It's progress, and that can feel good in and of itself. So it's not a game I'm enamored with, but I, I liked it more than you because I brought, I didn't have that expectation. Mechanically, it's sound, you know. Some of those actions are not exciting, you know. One of the actions is, okay, you, you now get to flip these tokens over. Okay, <laughs> I'm defended a little more now, okay. I might or might not get attacked, right? And then some of the other actions also. Again, there's a little bit of a mundane, almost bookkeeping kind of vibe to it, you know? But overall, I thought mechanically it was a, it was a sound game. Another aspect of the game that I enjoyed were the um, common goals that everybody could reach for. Yeah. And the fact that they were all out, they were known from the very beginning of the mm -hmm. game. There is no secret objectives that somebody can go, aha, you know, with. I liked the, the loss of that. 
Um, uh, and also, depending on what goals are out, there, there's more than what you use in one game. So what goals are randomly chosen for this particular game will change how this game plays uh, as compared to the next one, where sure. three different goals come out or three different card uh, goal cards come out. There, each, card, each card comes with two goals on it. So um, I, I like that because it changes the way the game would play. We, we talked about how little uh, military uh, played a part of, but it could actually play a huge part of the game if the military goal is out there yes. where you where you attack your you get points for attacking your players right. your your opponents rather so uh, i like that aspect of it i like the fact of uh, you know the cards we already talked about those the culture cards um, so i enjoyed all of that um, i don't know how it scales between the different player accounts though i mean we we've, we've played we it played with, 3 and 4 we didn't play 2 that's the only right. one we didn't play but uh, i think 4 is probably the best one i think 3 suffers from what i think a, a lot of three player games suffer from where uh, one person has an advantage he however slight it might be because we were talk we talked about this a yeah. little bit yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not convinced on that so, well uh, he's uh, he's talking about how two people will kind of be bothered by each other while yeah. the third person is untouched that's what he's talking about, right? Right, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I could see it happening. I did not think it did happen in the game where you said you, you were worried. That's why you won. I don't think it happened, but I could see it happening, sure. You should just say you won because you're really good at games. No, yeah, I don't think that's games. the case. I think the one thing that, that helped me the most in that game well, was me. I, I don't know. <laughs> was the fact that, uh, and I think this is probably at least partially um, needful, is not leaving... Uh, not neglecting dealing with the barbarians. Yeah, which I did in the last game we played. I um, and you got hit I the hardest. I gambled. Yeah, right. I was like, hardest. okay, they might come this way, they might not. I can spend time to protect myself, and then they don't show up anyway. I wasted the time, mm -hmm. or I can actually work on my goals, hope they don't come over, and I might win. Right? It's, it's a it's a coin flip, and they did, and they they yeah. You know, and so, it I mean, set me well, back. But. I mean, Tom said that they were annoyance, and they are. They are. But they're annoying, but it, at, at a point, they can really smack you, and they can really dent your civilization significantly. You lost an entire city yeah. uh, because of rolling the dice. Not, yeah. not So they, say they are annoying for the most part, but if you neglect them, they can really hit you pretty hard. And that's where I think a lot of people might fail uh, at this game, is simply saying, you know what, whatever. Well, if they I thought they hit me. I think if the barbarians were not in it, there would be con very little tension in this game. Like, very little. Almost there would, like a solitaire thing. They would, where they each, were just, every, everybody has their own little corner of the board. You would not have any drive to really do anything except, oh, I got to get that done, sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's there would be nothing to pull you away from just, yeah, that sequence, sure, push, push these buttons till that happens. <laughs> they have to be there. Right. Yeah. So overall, for me, this is getting a sideways thumb for me. I don't dislike it. I'll play it again, you know. Um, but I don't, I don't know that I would go seek it out. And again, I know that part of this is because of my preconception of going in looking for a Civ game. Yes. And it's not. But at the same time, I also, like you mentioned, that there's a lot of actions that feel like work. And I did not like that. I did not like taking an action that's like, meh, unless it's really fast. See, like, when I play Century Spice Road, it's really fast. Some actions are pretty boring. Pick up your cards. But my turn comes around so fast. Here, your turns go okay, but every once in a while, someone's going to get new cards. And then the game slows down for a while. Yeah. And if all I did was flip over a few tokens, I'm a little bit like, eh, I want to go again. It's pretty fast, though. No, it is. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think this... I, don't, I never... The only time this game ever really bogged down uh, and, you know, it happened on my turn a lot was where I was trying to think about what I needed to do. Yeah. Um, well, he didn't win also. So, <clears throat> so the that idea game. is... That game, yes. The, the idea... Oh, yeah. I got, I've, I've had my tail handed to me in this game. I've, I've been on both ends of that spectrum. So um, that's the only time I really bogged down. I mean, when somebody picks new cards when they upgrade their, their culture, it's pretty much, okay, I'm upgrading my cards. Go ahead and go. That's yeah, cool. and the rules even say that you can do that. They, like, they recommend yeah. that. Uh, so... It's okay for me, which I know is not a ringing endorsement, but that's how I feel about it. What about you? Well, with me, I don't think that I carried with uh, the, the same amount of baggage as you did with uh, the different uh, video games that are out there. I, right. I'm, I'm a lot like you. Yeah. I played uh, some of the earlier versions of, of Civ, but 
nothing even close to being modern with it. So I enjoyed it for what it was. I, I thought that the lack or rather the abstracting away of the military conflict in the game is a detractor for me, but it's not that big uh, taking into account or when compared to everything else that's there and how much I like all of that, <laughs> the gold cards. Uh, the dealing with the barbarians, uh, spreading your culture, using your different culture cards and all that kind of stuff, that really brought the game to a higher level. So I'm going to give this one and a half um, statues up because I did enjoy the game. That half a statue, though, is, is the military part of it that was lacking. And for me, I was... Uh, I think I'm going to give it one. One... Uh uh, one rocket. It's a rocket right there. Look at Ooh, that. Look at that. It's one rocket. rocket. Uh, Not in the game at all. <laughs> um, there are nukes in the game. And again, because I, I wasn't bringing anything to it, and I would say my main Clear piece technology. of advice, my main piece of advice here would be, if you are someone who is a fan of the Civ video games, go into it curbing your enthusiasm, curbing what you were expecting. You know. True. Because you, it's it's not it's not the video game. It's it's something else. It's something inspired by. How about that? Okay, and so I would I would go in there knowing that I would I would do my due uh, diligent work and look at reviews, look at overviews, immerse yourself in the game before you try, so that you don't show up to the table and go, this isn't my sieve. You know what I mean? Uh, but one one uh, rocket up for me because I did enjoy it. It's not one I'm going to keep coming back to. But it's one that I would not necessarily be opposed to playing, you know, a few more times if people wanted to try it. It's it's interesting and mechanically sound, if a little bit uh, mundane, maybe? A little bit boring, a little bit? Anyway, that's what I think. Cool. Well, there you go. That's it. Sid Meier's Civilization and New Dawn. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Zeke Garcia. Thank you. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. <laughs>